Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all well. Um, so in this one, um, it's going to be the second part of my sea lion uh, sort of video series, I suppose. It's going to be only with these, these two videos. Um, and I'm going to be trying to answer the question in this one, is the strategy worth going for in ranked play? Is it a, a valid, effective strategy? Particularly in platinum, that's the key, I think. Um, so we're going to be doing a few tests. Um, I've got some... <laughs> it's going to be the most mathematical episode I think I've uploaded on Axis and Allies. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of percentages, um, those kind of things thrown in there. Um, so I've done a bit of research uh, before making this, obviously, um, to try and uh, get some, some facts out there. So, yeah, let's just jump in. Now, to do the percentages in this uh, video, I've used um, a battle calculator. Um, you can find them online. This one was particularly good. I've, I've never used them before, actually, but it's, it's really useful. It was easy to use, very clear. Um, and this particular simulator, um, it, it simulates battles a thousand times on every battle. So what for, for every single percentage I'm going to display in this video, um, I ran the simulator five times, so that's 5,000 5, simulations. And I've given the average from those five runs. So we're giving a really kind of solid average for all the, uh, the stats displayed. Um, all these percentages are rounded to the nearest tenth of, of a percentage. Um, and also we're going to be basing the attacks on my build here. Obviously we've gone for a three transport builders, the Germans. Um, it's quite a nice one to, to compare because this sea land strategy, I've seen it done with two transports and also four transports. So we're, we're kind of, we've picked a nice line here, we're kind of on the middle road. Um, going for the average one in the middle, which is quite nice for com comparisons. Um, so, moving forward, we're going to be using, obviously, assuming we're using three transports as an attack, um, as a starting base on round two anyway. Um, and also, any battle where I'm attacking Britain, um, I'll be assuming that I've been attacking with an infantry and a tank combination. The most effective combination of land units to drop off on a transport is an infantry unit and a tank. Um, Infantry artillery is close, but it doesn't give us the same attack power as a tank does. Uh, infantry and tank, so we'll be attacking with that combination of troops um, in the battle. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, now, my opponent, here's how he chose to defend. Um, he's gone for seven infantry and one anti-air. Now, I think this is a good purchase, personally. I think it's good. Um, I think it, if it was me on his side, I would have chosen this one as well. Um, because obviously you're thinking about the six planes that are incoming, because <laughs> it looks quite scary. There's this well, there's six fighter planes, and then there's a, a bomber, obviously. So a, an anti-air gun makes a lot of sense because you want to try and take out as many of those planes as you can. Um, I think also did he put? Double check did he put? Because that should leave enough IPC for something else in. Um, yeah, okay, so put one artillery in India as well. Okay, so that, that leaves him a bit of IPC left to also drop something into India, which is good. Um, now, if I was to attack uh, Britain at this stage, um, <laughs> the percentage chance of me winning this with three tanks in the transport is 33.4%. So it's pretty low at this at this stage because he's defended well. It's it's a good defence. Um, but what I'd like to do just quickly, because I think it was a comment in the um, on the the last video, just about what I would recommend for purchases for Britain. Um, so I've drawn up a little um, presentation about the best purchases and the worst purchases if you were playing as the Allied player in this situation. What's what's good to do, what's not good to do. And it's surprising actually. Um, so yeah, let's just jump, jump in. Okay, here we go. So if you're looking at the percentages, that's, this number here is the chance of the Axis player winning the fight. Um, so this is it's always going to be from, from that perspective as we are obviously representing in, in this one the Axis player. Um, so if Britain were to, to uh, buy three fighters, the chance of success for a, a Axis attack would be 85.5% chance, which is pretty, that's extremely high. I knew fighters wouldn't be a great purchase if you were the Allied player, but that's a pretty high percentage given that. So if you, yeah, don't spend on fighters. <laughs> it's really not worth it. It's very much not worth it. Um, I was also curious about a, a water build if you were going to block the German fleet. Um, from the eastern side of Britain, would that have a, a decent effect? But here we've got um, one carrier, one destroyer, and a three infantry buy. Um, you've maxed out on IPC because Britain get 31 IPC to spend. Um, 
on round one. Um, and this gives the Axis player an 80, sorry, 68.9% chance of winning the fight. Again, pretty bad. I think that's that's definitely doable. I think attacking Britain, you'd want to be at least around kind of like 66%, I would say, because that gives you a two-thirds chance of success. Um, any lower than that, you get a bit dicey. I guess the, suppose the reward is obviously if you take if you win the fight, you take Britain. So I think because it, you're going for a capital city, it might be better. You might risk a lower win percentage just to try and take the, the capital. Because obviously if you do win, the reward is so high that it might be worth you know risking that extra bit of percentage. But yeah, pretty bad purchase there. Which is surprising. I thought this would be a better... It would roll better, but no, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. The best water purchase you can make if you are going to try and defend with water, which I don't recommend, um, is one carrier. Obviously put the two fighters on the carrier and then you've got five infantry left to put back into Britain. Um, so that's 57.7% chance of um, Axis winning the fight. Again, not great for the Allies. That's a pretty bad purchase, to be fair. Um, not something I'd recommend. Now, this particular purchase is the one my opponent went for here. Um, and again, this is one I think I probably would have gone for as well. Um, it's only the fourth best in this list in terms of if we're looking at purely defending Britain itself. Um, it's the fourth best choice. So he's gone for seven infantry and one anti-air gun. Um, now the nice thing about this one obviously is it gives it only costs 26 IPC um, that's purely for troops going into Britain it does leave you an extra you know 5 IPC to put something into uh, India either an artillery like my opponent did or another infantry um, and the percentage chance of the Axis winning the fight is pretty good it's 33.4% chance of winning now if I was the Axis player on that percentage I would not attack um, that's just too low that's you know you're gonna win the fight one out maybe three three times it's it's just not it's not sensible it's just, particularly if you're playing like a ranked game those kind of chances are not <laughs> are not what you want to be playing with that's just it's just too risky because obviously if you're consistently playing this strategy that's gonna give you uh, overall you're gonna be losing games doing that um, so the third best purchase that the British can make on round one is eight infantry um, pretty straightforward, makes sense. Uh, they're cheap, good defensive unit. Um, so actually, if, if you purchase eight, you're going to be spending 24 IPC in Britain alone, which I'll come back to this later, but it allows you to spend more IPC in India, which is something I'll get onto properly in, in later on in the video. But um, So if you, if you spend on eight infantry, um, the Axis have got a 27% chance of winning the fight, which is pretty bad. Pretty bad. Number two, obviously, you, can, you probably guessed the last two. Um, seven infantry and a tank, 23.5%. It's the silver. And then you've got the best purchase purely for defending Britain is seven infantry and one fighter plane at 31 IPC. You've maxed out your purchase. Um, but that gives a 19.9% .9 chance that the Axis win that fight, um, which is the lowest you can get. But again, I'm going to just look at what I think is the best purchase for Britain here. Um, now again, obviously you are spending, if you do this purchase, it, it's good, you're securing Britain and you're also giving yourself a fighter plane to use possibly on the offensive if you spend later on in water or, you know, whatever you want to do. But I think the problem with spending entirely in Britain is you're obviously neglecting India. Now India is an is important territory to hold. Um, well, I think probably one of the main reasons as well an Axis player would go for this strategy is to try and undermine India and weaken the position for the Japanese to move in. Um, so I think the best choice, the most cost-effective purchase to make as the British on round one, would be go to go for the infantry build. So you get 24 IPC, that's 8 infantry into Britain, and that leaves you 2 infantry spare to put into India. So you're not completely abandoning India, you're still putting troops in there. And you're still getting a good percentage, 27% chance of the Axis winning the fight. I mean, they wouldn't take that fight. In ranked play, you would not go for that. I mean, that's just a, a terrible move to make. <laughs> it's just too too low, too low a percentage. So, yeah, that's the that's. I think that's probably the best choice to make if you are, if you come against this on ranked play. I would personally say go for that, um, unless you've got another idea. But I think that's that's the most cost effective uh, way to defend. Okay, so we've looked at the um, the purchases for Britain. Um, now, obviously, he didn't choose the the most optimal build. But it, it's, it's still pretty good. It was one of the better ones, I'd say. Um, he's put something in Britain, sorry, in India, 
Um, he's defended Britain itself to a good extent. Uh, to an extent which I'm not going to now attack because attacking now... Well, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. <laughs> but attacking now in general rank play would be really impractical of me. Um, impractical to do. Sorry. It just wouldn't make uh, sense at all. Um, now the other option, I suppose, if you're not going to attack on round one, if you've if your opponent has defended properly in this, in which his, you know this this guy has, um, the other option is to wait until round three, and then hopefully you know um, you'll have more firepower, more transport, and you can have a, a stronger attack on round three. Um, so let's just jump ahead. I'm not going to go, obviously um, make the move until the end because I've, I've got something <laughs> got, I've got something planned for this one. But um, yeah, round three. Let's assume that again your opponent defended well in Britain, meaning the percentage was too low to go for a landing in round two. Um, now what you could do in round two now is Germany. Let's quickly just yeah. I think I was playing around with this last night. You have you should have 42 IPC left on round two, which will allow you to build six transports. So if you wanted to go for this, you could go for a round three attack with nine transports. And if you look as well in the area around Germany, we have more than enough troops to do that. We've got two tanks here, we've got five here, three here, um, and there are more than enough infantry to support that. So we could do a landing with nine transports, nine tanks, nine infantry in round three. Um, that's going to give us the maximum damage output that we can. Um, and also, I just thought to point out as well, I, in this the first video on this series, I attacked the, the British transport here instead of going for the American transport here. Now, I've done the calculations on what happens if you go for either this fleet or this fleet um, in round one, and it, it does vary. So if I attack the US transport, actually we'll do, we'll do the first one, we'll do the first one. So we attack the, the British transport um, in round one, which meant obviously if you've got a competent allied player, they're probably going to reinforce with the spare two transports that they left, obviously had in America. Um, and also they have, he moved up here, but there is two fighters available to reinforce Britain. Also, he's obviously put a bomber in there as well. So if... If the Allied player chooses to reinforce with everything possible by the end of round two with the Americans, he'll have two transport worth of troops, so two infantry, tank, artillery, two fighters, and a bomber. That's because we didn't take out these two transports here. So they'll be shipped in at the end of round two, um, and obviously we're going to go for the attack on round three. Um, now, if this if this all happened, then the chance of winning the fight in round three is... 13.6% um, for the axis, which is awful, <laughs> which is really bad. It's terrible. Um, so, in a sense, going for the, which is what I did in the beginning of this video, um, this the last video, I went for this uh, fleet here. I thought take out all the British troops because it'd be, you know, clear all the, the British troops out of the water, not give us the best chance. But actually, it allows more troops to get landed into Britain, get dropped off into Britain. By the Americans, so actually you're, you're hurting yourself. So the better choice, if you are going to go for an attack in round three, is to go for the American transports, not the British transports. Um, if you went on round one, and went for the British, uh, sorry, the American transports, you would have a 30.4% chance of winning the fight if you then landed in Britain on round three uh, with your nine transports. So again, the odds are pretty bad. It's it's pretty bad. Yeah. So what I'm learning here is if it's um, this the the effectiveness of the strategy really does depend on the experience level of your opponent. Um, if they're a weaker player, they may not defend properly with of the troop choices. We saw at the beginning of the video, depending on what you purchase, the chance of the Axis taking Britain on round two varies dramatically from purchase to purchase. So if they make a bad purchase, you've got a window in to try and take, uh, take Britain. Um, but the thing is, in, at plat, plat level, platinum level, this isn't going to work. Going for Britain directly is not going to work because they'll, they'll defend properly. They'll make a good purchase on round one as Britain. They'll be reinforcing with the Americans to ensure they'll take, you know, controlling Britain properly for a round three attack. So there's, there's never going to be an opening to actually directly hit Britain and take it. Um, so I think 
overall, this strategy for the all levels, including platinum, is not valid. I don't think it works if your if your intention is to actually invade Britain. Um, now, what I will say, I think it's it's good in other other, other aspects. Um, going for Britain itself, I don't think works because we've looked at the percentages. If you if your opponent spends correctly, you you're not going to get in. Um, however, what it does do is it diverts resources away from India, um, because obviously an, a good sort of idea with this strategy is to if you put a transport here, you're threatening a move to Britain, so Britain has to respond with defensive troops, which is going to divert resources away from India, um, which then in turn allows Japan an easier take of India, which is a good thing. Um, obviously, as well, it's putting troops into Britain that aren't going to be particularly useful for the first few rounds, because obviously Germany's got the naval control. If Britain goes for a navy and blocks it here, we've already looked at that, the chances of you know, defending Britain are pretty bad. So he has to spend, if he's going to spend sensibly, he has to spend on land. And these, these units aren't doing anything. In the overall game, they're not having any effect. They're just defending Britain. Um, so the German has forced that has forced the hand of the British player quite a lot there by forcing him to spend on, on land. But those two things, I think diverting resources and weakening India are the two, I think, the biggest plus bits I can see from this strategy. I don't see there's, there's much else to it. Um, now the problem with it as well, if you're not going to go for a direct attack with Britain, you're just, you're just bluffing here. Um, you're still giving Russia an upper hand. Because any any IPC that's spent on water is not going into land troops against Russia. And Russia, although obviously their economy is weaker at the beginning, and their, their troop numbers on land as well is, is weaker than the German army, given time they, they could become a real threat. Um, so I don't think, I think overall, it's not a strategy for me. <laughs> I think that, yeah, it may be worth doing something like a, a cheaper water build possibly. Um, something like an extra transport here, maybe a carrier, and not attacking the British fleet or something. Leaving the carrier here, uh, the cruiser here, sorry. Um, just, just a bluff, as a, as a pure bluff, you're not, you you don't intend to go for Britain, but obviously Britain has to react to that. So they spend on land and obviously divert resources, useful resources, away from actually doing something effective. So it could have some validity, I think, in the higher levels. But I think if your intention is to go for Britain and actually land on it, it's not going to work, basically. Um, I think for me, looking at the percentages and all this kind of stuff, I think it's put me off, I think, going, <laughs> going for this in the future. I mean, it's a, it's a fun idea. I think the, there is something to it. But in terms of just generally ranked play, I'm trying to play serious and get get the win. I think it's just too risky. It's too messy, too risky. I'd rather go for Russia. Keep it plain and simple. <laughs> go spend purely on land and do it that way. Maybe spend a few... Put a few IPC into submarines, maybe, um, to try and sink some of the transports that are coming from Britain. But apart from that, spending purely on land just to try and go for Russia quickly. Um, so that's it, really. Um, that was the summary, so I think we've gone into it. I mean, I could have gone into more depth with different strategies, but there's so many iterations that could happen in this game. It's like chess. The, the possibilities are so so varied. <laughs> it's just it wouldn't be worth going into every single possibility, but that was some of the, the more common situations I've encountered, or I thought could be encountered in, in a ranked game. Um, but there we go. Um, now, in this game... <laughs> um, Obviously now we've found out that attacking, if I attack now, I've got a terrible chance of winning the fight. It was, what was it, 33.4% chance if I attack now of winning the fight. Um, but this video is called Attempting Operation Sea Line, so I think we actually have to attempt Operation Sea Line. We have, <laughs> we have to go for it. So I'm going to attack, I'm going to go for it. Um, let's just think what I'm going to purchase. I think I'll probably re resign after this anyway because it's it's over. Um, it's not a proper rank game. This is it's more of an experiment for me just to test something out. So, um, why not? Let's go six. Let's go six transports instead. So combat move. Let's see if we can beat the odds. One two three and one two three. In we go. Brilliant. 
I mean, it looks it looks better than it actually is because you've got so many fighters. It looks quite impressive, but actually, when you get down to the numbers, it's 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 really not. It's it's pretty scary. Um, I will also attack here. Let's try and take out the Ukraine. Um, go for a cheeky attack here, maybe as well. Let's do that. Oh, one thing before we finish as well. Um, there is a possibility in this strategy to use the the, the transport that was down here near Gibraltar. Um, someone in the comments mentioned a mistake I made. I actually moved the transport um, into season 14 and then dropped off the unit. And my battleship was in unit thir sorry season 13. The better play obviously was to move the transport into season 13 and then drop the infantry off. Um, so obviously that would have protected the infantry, um, which is a good point. I missed that. Which then also allows you to drop things off into Britain as an extra transport. Um, but I didn't include that in the statistics purely because it's a bit of a... There are chances you could still lose the transport here. Because um, America might have a destroyer here. They could send in with, a, with bomber support, try and take out the battleship and the transport. Um, there are things around here that could happen. It's just, it's a bit... It was a bit uncertain. So I thought I'd leave that out and just go for purely the build um, in the Baltics. Um... I'll include that in the video, so that's, that's, that's my reasoning behind that. But Okay, so, I think we are ready to go for the attack. Let's do it. This is the big one first. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, two air defences, come on. Okay, one plane's not bad. Could be worse. Alright, see what we can do. Pretty good hits there, as he's fair. Okay. Damn, we need some misses now. Need some misses. Oof. Okay, we, we have, if we're going to go for a break, we have to take away now planes and not the tank, so... Yeah, it's getting bad already. <laughs> Three hits. Okay, all the infantry are dead. Misses from the bombers. Okay. Yep, and there it goes. Two hits there. One tank remaining. <laughs> Can the tank do it? Good hit. Who's going to take out the tank? The tank, we tank. There we go. And done. Uh, so, as expected, we lost the fight. Pretty powerful the rest of this. <laughs> 102 loss. Yeah, it's positive now. I'm, I'm in moves afterwards, but yeah. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, so in summary, if you're going to go for Britain with sea line, don't, <laughs> unless it's a bluff and you're just diverting resources away from Britain. But if you're going to go for an actual attack, I would recommend against it, um, particularly in the higher levels because you will get punished for it. But there we go. That's so uh, hopefully uh, been useful to some of you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.